So in this video, we're going to be building out a React front end that makes API calls to a Python server. Now, this video is in collaboration with Anthony over on the Pretty Printed YouTube channel. So he is going to show you how to build out that Python server in Flask. So if you haven't already, I'm going to link below his video. His video is part one. He's going to show you how to create that server. And in this video, we're going to use that API to render some movies in React. So I'm going to assume you already have that server built and you have it running in the background. I have mine running on port 5000 just in the background and then I have my command line open and this is where we're going to start with the React part. So I'm going to assume you have Node installed. I have version 10.9 but anything semi-recent is good. The thing you're going to need is this thing called MPX which comes with Node. Um, we can see I have version 6.6. .6. So if you're not getting that, you want to up your version of Node. Um, and it comes with uh, npm is with that. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to say npx create React app. Um, and this is going to create a boilerplate project for us. And we're just going to give it a name. I called mine React Movie List. And go ahead and run that. And then it's going to create a React Movie List folder. I've already run this. Um, and you just want to open that up in your favorite editor. So this is what it looks like for me in uh, VS Code. So what I did is I just have everything up on the left here and I went ahead and went to the command line in this folder and just ran npm start and ran that. So when you do that, it should look like this. And if you go to port localhost 3000 in your browser, it should look like this. So if you got to this point, you got everything set up correctly and we're ready to start coding React. So for the UI of this, uh, we're gonna be using semantic UI. Um, so we're going to just start by installing this, and we're going to go through the getting started. So step one is to install Semantic UI React, and then step two is to also install Semantic UI CSS. So we're going to install both of those. So I'm going to say MP, npm i Semantic UI React and Semantic UI CSS. And then in our index.js, the top of the file, we want to just import the semantic UI CSS file. And this is what's going to allow us to have the CSS applied to our components. And then we're going to be coding primarily in app.js over here. Um, so perfect, we have an app function. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just clear this stuff out and just keep this uh, div around the outside. So the first thing that I want to start with is making an API call. So we want to make an API call to the Flask server and basically render the movie. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So we can make an API call inside of a use effect. So we're going to be using a React hooks for this. So I'm going to say, you can import this from React up here. Use effect. Inside of this, we're going to have our function. And I only want this function to be called whenever the component first mounts. So I'm going to put an empty array there. So here I'm going to say fetch and then the URL that I'd like to fetch. So in this case, I'm going to say slash movies. And I'm not going to put HTTP localhost 5000 here. Instead, I'm going to head over to my package.json and add a proxy. Uh, this is to avoid problems with cores. So I'm going to say proxy and we're going to say HTTP localhost 5000. So now whenever we make a request to say slash movies, create react app is going to handle it for us and proxy it to the right server. All right, so we're going to fetch here and then we're going to say dot then and in the response, we're going to say response dot JSON and then we're going to get the response to that and that we're going to get some movie data. So I'm just going to console.log the data that we get for this. Now you'll note I usually use async and await, but inside of a use effect you get an error if you return a promise. So that is why I'm using fetch and doing dot then here. Um, so let's go ahead and go to our browser now and view this. Um, and we have a little problem, cannot find the module. So I'm just going to just restart our server because we just added that module. And then we're going to just open up the console. So whenever you do console logs, it's going to open up in the console and it's going to print the data and then we can view it there. So if we just right click, say inspect, you can view the console. 
um, and we want to see the data there. So for me, it has a little object. If I click on that, I can see all the movies that I've already added to the database. So we can see some movies, ratings, and titles. So there we go. So the next step is to take this data and actually render it on the screen. So we fetched it here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is add a use state. And again, this is coming from React. And I'm going to say movies and then set movies. So now I can say set movies. Um, and so basically what this is going to do, and I want the default state to be an empty array, is we are going to get the data from the API and put it inside of the state here. So then we can have access to what the movie value is through this variable called movies here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new component here. So I'm going to say components, and I'm going to say movies. And this is going to handle rendering the movie. So I'm going to say uh, import react from react. I'm going to say export const movies. And we're going to take a prop, which is going to be the movies. And for now, we're just going to return uh, movies.length. So now in my app over here, I'm going to render a movie or a movies component. And that auto imported for me, for me. And then we're going to pass in our movies uh, variable as a prop. So now if we come back over here, we should be able to see the length of that. Um, I save it and we have that. And let's see, it's not showing up or it is showing up. It's just size zero. Oh, it's empty. So movies, movies dot length. I think uh, maybe it's undefined. So we're just going to do a console log here. of our movies. And it looks like it's the key dot movies. Uh, so I need to do that right here. So data dot movies. Because I don't want to pass an object to my set, my set movies, I want to pass the array of movies. So you want to make sure and do that as well. So dot movies. And if I keep the console log there, what we want to see in our log is an array of of objects and we can see that there and then this is where we want to see the length so in this case we're going to see 10. Now you should see the initial render should render a empty array and then we fetch the data from the API and when the data comes in we then show the 10 items. All right so let's actually display this um, in a more pretty manner. So here we're going to say list and this is coming from semantic UI. And inside of that, we're going to say list.item. Well, we're going to say list.item for every single movie. So we want to map over the movies. So let's do that. Also, I'm going to auto import this. Um, so what I did is I have my cursor right here and I do control space and we can go down and you can see it says auto import and just hit enter. All right, so I'm going to say movies.map um, and then we're going to say for each movie. We want to return a list.item. So whenever we map over something in React, we need to pass in a key. So the key in this case is going to be using the title. So I'm assuming there's going to be no duplicate titles. All right, so the first thing that I want to render is just the name of the movie. So I'm going to say heading, and then we're going to say movie.title. And let's import that as well. Um, it doesn't look like it's picking up, so we can just add it here. Or oops, I guess it's header. Okay. And we'll just refresh. Just taking a second to compile, I guess. And cool. So now we can see the list of movies that we have here. So the next step that I want to do is render the ratings for it. So there is a rating component that we can use. And here we're going to just pass in the rating. So movie.rating. All right, so we can see the rating here. And uh, for this, we want to say what the maximum rating can be. By default, I believe it's one. 
So we're gonna say max rating, it can be up to five. Um, and now we can see all five stars. Um, and we can click on them here, and that's not really something we wanna support. We don't really want you to be able to change the rating here, at least not right now. So to disable that, I'm gonna just say disabled on my rating. And now we can see the stars here, and we can see the movies themselves, so cool. So now we have rendered the list of movies. The next step that I want to do is be able to add a new movie onto this list. So let's do that. Now to do that, I'm going to create a new component, which I'm going to call movie form. So we're going to create a form so you can type in the information and then we're going to make a request up to the server to create that movie. So import react from react. And then inside of here, I'm going to say form. And again, this is coming from semantic UI. And I'm going to create the first form field. And inside of this, we're going to do an input. And uh, so here, the input is going to represent the title of the movie. So I'm going to create some state so we can store the value of the movie title. So I'm going to say title, set title, use state. And by default, it's going to be an empty string. All right. So the value of this input is going to be the title. Um, and for the placeholder, we can say movie title. And then on change, we can say um, we get an event. So we're going to pass in a function to on change. And the function takes an event. And then the event has the value in it. So we can say set title event.target.value. All right, so give that a save. And let's just render this um, in R. We don't need index anymore in our app. So the top here, I'm going to in insert movie form. I don't need this console log anymore. I'm also going to wrap this in a container component from Semantic UI. All right, cool. And we're kind of mashed up against the top here, but we can see our input, so that's good. So maybe I'm going to say style margin top 40 and give that a save. Awesome. And we have this all centered. You can choose whether you like having the movie centered in the middle. That styling is coming from this div up here. So if you like that, you can keep it or you can remove it and they will all format to the left. All right, so we have our movie title here and I can type in just fine and it's gonna store that in the state. So the next step is to be able to tell what the rating or select the rating for that movie. So movie form, I'm gonna copy this because we want another form field around it. I'm gonna say rating and uh, value or type. Um, I think it's called, uh, there's like, I think the icon is the name. There we go. So you can choose between what icon you want. We're going to use the star icon. The value is going to be the rating. So I'm going to say const rating, set rating. And this is going to be a numerical value. So it's going to start at one and then we can choose what we want it to go to by saying max rating of five. And then we can say on rate and I'm going to say uh, data is the second prop. That's what we care about for this rating component. So I'm going to say underscore because I don't care about the first parameter in this function. It's going to say data. And I'm just going to console log the data so you can see what we get when we click on the star. All right, so this is the star showing up. If I click, we can see this is what we have. If we click, the value is changing. Um, and you'll notice the difference is the the rating there. So go to two, the rating is two. So that's the value we want. So we're gonna say set rating is equal to data.rating. Give that a save. So as we click, it's still gonna change to the value we want. And the last step is to add a button that is going to submit the form. So we're gonna say, this can be a form field as well. That's just fine. Say button, 
and that is coming from semantic UI as well. And we're just going to say uh, submit so that should show up here. Um, and then we just need to say what happens when we click on this button. So we're going to say on click. And so what I want to do is I want to make a request to our server and I want to send whatever the title and the rating that the user put in here. So let's start with that. And I'm going to make this function async. So here I'm going to say uh, const response is equal to await fetch. And so here we're going to go to add movie. So that is the route to create a movie. And now we're going to pass in some options. So the method is going to be post. We're making a post request. We're going to say headers and we're going to say content type application slash JSON. Since we're going to be sending some JSON code and then the body is going to say JSON dot stringify. And then we need to pass in an object that's going to be our movie. So we're going to say const movie up here is equal to a title and a rating. And those values are coming from whatever is located in the state or stored in the state. So now we're going to say movie here. Um, and then the response, we can check the response dot OK, whether it worked. And uh, if it did, we know, oops, console.log response worked. Otherwise, we know it failed for some reason. And uh, let's go ahead and just test this part out right here. We're not going to update our UI quite yet. At least we're not in this code. All it's going to do is make the request and then do a console log. So we have our console open. So I'm going to add a movie here, avatar, and I'm going to give it five stars. And we're going to submit. And it says response worked. Cool. So if I scroll down to the bottom, can see all the movies and we see avatar is not there right which makes sense because we we talked about it we didn't we're not updating the ui yet but if we say we're to refresh the page i um, mean we go scroll at the bottom we see avatar because we're refetching from the database so basically what we want to do is update the ui now after we get a good response so how can we do that so our movies oops not this one up here in our state, basically when we want to add a movie to the movie array here. So I'm going to say on new movie. So this is a prop that I'm going to pass into the movie. And basically it's going to call it whenever we get a new movie. And so here I can say set movies and I can add a movie. So I'm going to say um, current movies and we're going to keep the current movies and add the new movie that we just created onto the end. All right, so then in our movie form over here, if this worked, we are going to say on new movie. Let's copy that. That's going to be a prop. And we're going to pass it in this movie. Uh, the other thing we can do is you notice that our form didn't clear after we submitted. We can clear the form uh, if we want to as well by just calling the set title and set rating and set them to the default. So set title, empty set rating to one. All right, so we'll give that a save. Um, the other thing to note is we're choosing to add the movie onto the end. If we want to, we could also add the moving movie to the beginning. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like if you want to switch that up. So do three stars for Detective Pikachu. Submit. So you'll notice it cleared up here. It looks like the, the rating value did not. Uh, I'm guessing it's because we should be using, instead of value, I'm guessing it wants rating. I think that's where I messed this up. So we'll double check that. Um, but if we scroll down to the bottom, Detective Pikachu showed up here. So awesome. So let's say the new movie that we added, we want it to come to the very top. All right, so save, come over to here. Uh, what we would do is instead of uh, adding the movie to the end here, and then we can move it to beginning like this. So now what's gonna happen is the movie that the new movie 
we're going to put out the beginning of the array. Then we're going to put all the existing movies that we already know about at the end. All right, so we're going to save that. And now two things to test. We want to make sure the rating here refreshes. So we're going to say five um, and we're going to say Lego movie six. Submit and notice it cleared here. And we can also see the Lego movie six showed up at the beginning. So awesome. Yeah, so there we go. That's the end of this video. We saw how we can call a Python API um, using React, using fetch. We we're able to fetch the movies at the beginning. Um, and then we we're able to add new movies by making a call to the server here. This adds it to the database. Um, and then we updated our UI afterwards. Oops, let's add that C back. So if you guys liked this video and you want to see more collaborations with Anthony, give this video a like and let me know in the comments below.